Now, an emeritus news brief, I'm Lynn Houston. President Obama announces more details of his jobs plan, which he hopes will also help small businesses. The president made the announcement at the Brookings Institution, a nonpartisan think tank Thank near the White House. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. You know, first, we're proposing a series of steps to help small businesses grow and hire new staff. Over the past 15 years, small businesses have created roughly 65% of all new jobs in America. Building on the tax cuts in the Recovery Act, we're proposing a complete elimination of capital gains taxes on small business investment, along with an extension of write-offs to encourage small businesses to expand in the coming year. And I believe it's worthwhile to create a tax incentive to encourage small businesses to add and keep employees, and I'm going to work with Congress to pass one. Now, these steps will help but we also have to address the continuing struggle of small businesses to get loans that they need to start up and grow. To that end, we're proposing to waive fees and increase the guarantees for SBA-backed loans. And I'm asking my Treasury Secretary to continue mobilizing the remaining TARP funds to facilitate lending to small businesses. Second, we're proposing a boost in investment in the nation's infrastructure beyond what was included in the Recovery Act to continue modernizing our transportation and communications networks. These are needed public works that engage private sector companies, spurring hiring all across the country. Already more than 10,000 of these projects have been funded through the Recovery Act. And by design, Recovery Act work on roads, bridges, water systems, Superfund sites, broadband networks, and clean energy projects will all be ramping up in the months ahead. It was planned this way for two reasons. So the impact would be felt over a two-year period, and more importantly, because we wanted to do this right. Third, I'm calling on Congress to consider a new program to provide incentives for consumers who retrofit their homes to become more energy efficient, which we know creates jobs, saves money for families, and reduces the pollution that threatens our environment. Two workers' advocacy groups, the Center for American Progress and the National Employment Law Project, calling on Congress to make sure that they extend unemployment benefits before they leave for the Christmas holiday. More than one million workers' extended benefits are set to run out at the end of the month, with another three million in March. Supporters of the legislation are optimistic something will be done, but still no one is saying exactly when. The Nelson Hatch Amendment to the Senate Health Insurance Reform Proposal Preventing Federal Payments for Abortions has been defeated in the Senate. A similar amendment passed in the House, but it's less likely to make it in the Senate now, despite certain attempts by supporters to keep trying. The EPA declaring a public threat from greenhouse gases. Administrator Lisa Jackson holding a news conference to set the record straight that the facts are indisputable despite the uproar over a scandal showing some climate researchers were trying to hide information not in their favor. Large emitters in the United States will begin working with EPA to monitor their emissions. Beginning in 2011, large emitters will, for the first time, submit publicly available information that will allow us to meaningfully track greenhouse gas emissions over time. This reporting will also bring to light opportunities to jumpstart private investment in energy efficiency and new technologies and products, saving money, improving bottom lines, and growing the economy. And it does all of this in a common sense way, without putting a burden on small businesses or other critical sectors of our economy. The announcement comes as international representatives gather in Copenhagen for a global warming conference. Consumer Reports magazine releasing research findings that 2008 model Toyota owners made up 41% of complaints regarding sudden acceleration problems. Consumer Reports has made a video offering tips on how drivers can handle such problems. If this ever happens to you, here's what you need to do. Put your foot on the brake hard. Put the car to neutral, the car will stop, the engine will rev, once you're stopped, Turn off the car and you're safe. The Consumer Reports video has other important information about the problem, which we rate as a must-see. You can get a direct link to the video on the Emeritus News Consumer page.
Also on the Emeritus News homepage, the smokescreen over cuts in Medicare's home health care program. Opponents say it will hurt seniors, but some seniors advocates say it's just cutting the waste to provide more care to others. And the Supreme Court considers a case that could strengthen the so-called Miranda rights for defendants. The latest on the biggest issues and public policy at EmeritusNews.com and live 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on the Emeritus News Channel at Livestream.com. That's an Emeritus News Brief. I'm Lynn Houston.